Hi, this is Kevin Trainer. Welcome to my introduction lecture for IS446 Systems Analysis and Design in the fall of 2023. Um, this is an on-campus course. It meets on Tuesday mornings. And um, what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to take you through our Canvas uh, site, I'm going to take you through our syllabus, I'm going to take you through our weekly schedule, and try to give you a, a pretty good orientation to the course and what to expect. Okay? Um, so here we are right now, we're looking at the Canvas site for the course. And it's organized like I organize all of them, maybe a little different than what you've seen from other instructors who use the, the template that comes from the iSchool. The way that I organize these uh, Canvas sites is with this module uh, page. So uh, each of these uh, big blocks of content is what uh, Canvas calls a module. And uh, I've got four of them here. Uh, the first one is kind of uh, identifying things about the course. The second one is uh, contact us about uh, uh, me and uh, the TA. Uh, the third one is where you're going to submit your assignments. So there's an entry here for each assignment in the course. And then the fourth one is uh, uh, assignment solutions. I'm going to be giving out solutions to uh, each of these uh, skills practice assignments that we do. And we're going to be discussing them in uh, class. Okay, so uh, let's go through this uh, site in a little more detail. Uh, so again, this is IS446, Systems Analysis and Design. It's the A section. There is only one section. It meets on Tuesday mornings. I have a link here to the syllabus and a, week to, a link to our weekly schedule. So if we click through on the syllabus, um, it's going to retrieve the syllabus from the website on which I keep it. So uh, this is always going to link to the current version, OK? Uh, and if I, when I update the syllabus, which I'm going to do soon because uh, we haven't announced the TA yet, the teaching assistant is still uh, to be announced. Uh, so whenever I do this, I will uh, I will update the document on the website that this uh, points to, I, and uh, I'll make an uh, announcement in the Canvas announcements. Okay, so our uh, course is going to meet in uh, in the LIS uh, building, which is uh, great, in room 53. It's going to go from 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. Uh, and a lot of the weeks, it's going to run shorter than that, and then I'll have a lab session at the end. Okay. Um, uh, again, the teaching assistant, uh, we're pretty close to announcing that, but um, I need to work out a detail or two, so that'll be forthcoming hopefully tomorrow, okay? Uh, so that's how you find the syllabus. I'll be reviewing more of the details on that in a couple minutes, okay? Um, the weekly schedule is how I organize the content that uh, we're going to cover in each of the weeks. Okay, so you can see here um, that there's, uh, when you click through on the week, you come through the index of weekly schedule uh, pages for our uh, course. 
and you can see that there are 17 of them. As a, technically, there are 17 weeks in the semester, but the last one is all exam time that we don't use in in this course. So we, there really are 16. And one of those, I think week number 14, is our Thanksgiving vacation. So in terms of real uh, teaching weeks, there are 15 of them. OK. And um, the way that you go to the detail page for each of the weeks is you click on the week number. And here we are at the detail page for week one. And the pages are organized in the following way. There's a content block here for each event that happens during the week. OK, so the first thing that happens is our Tuesday morning uh, class. So there's a block for the class. OK, and then the second thing that happens is our uh, uh, we have a dedicated lab session every week on Friday afternoon from 2 to 3. OK, and then ordinarily, if we have a hand in assignment, it's due last thing on Sunday evening. OK, so we usually would have like a, a weekly assignments a due block. But if there are no assignments due, I've replaced that with a schedule note that says there are no hand in assignments due this week. OK, so. The authoritative place to go find out what's happening during the week or what's due or when something due or any of that kind of stuff is the weekly schedule. OK. And I have I have the first three weeks of content in the weekly schedule and I'll be going through that. Um, that's probably the last thing I'm going to go through uh, here in this uh, recording. OK. So let's get off of that and go back to uh, Canvas. OK, so what other things have we got up here in this first module? Well, please set your preferred name using the university self-service application. Um, I want us to call you what you want to be called. And the way to make that happen is for you to go um, into the university self-service application and um, tell and register the name that you prefer. OK, that will change your name as it appears on Canvas and Zoom. OK, and we'll take it from there now. One of the ways I keep track of who's on these on campus uh, courses is I create name tags. And uh, I've already printed out the name tags for week one. And they are whatever your name was this morning when I logged into the system. Um, we can change those. OK, so if you haven't had an opportunity to register to your preferred name yet, please just uh, do it soon. And then we'll correct the name badge. OK. OK, uh, getting help in iSchool quick links. Uh, when the when the iSchool creates a template for these um canvas pages they have a bunch of links and stuff and i haven't used the template but what i've done is i've taken their quick links and put them into this section here so this is a way for you to find your way to lots of good resources and help okay open discussion forum okay we're going to be doing most of our discussion in the class, but it's always helpful to have a place where if we want to discuss things with other people in the course, that there's a place to do that and thus the open discussion forum. Okay. 
Um, now, the TA and I will visit this from time to time and we'll uh, participate if it's appropriate for us to do so. But primarily, this is uh, an opportunity for you folks to interact with yourselves. Um, if you need help associated with this course, this is not the way to get it. If you need help from the TA or from me, okay? There's a help desk for this course. And there's a link to get to the description of it if you'd like to click through on that. And I'll explain this when we get to the page for that link in a minute. Okay? So if you need her help in any kind of urgent way, don't be uh, posting a question to the open discussion, open discussion forum because uh, you won't get answers uh, from the TA or for me in any kind of urgent way. Uh, Zoom meetings. Okay, so this is an on campus class. And so uh, normal meetings to class will not be on Zoom. So I won't be setting up Zoom sessions for those. But we are going to have a weekly online lab. Um, that's going to happen on Friday afternoon. We'll get to that in a bit. And I will be setting these up uh, in the next couple of days. And um, when it's time for a Friday online lab, you'll be able to go here. And uh, the link that's at the top will be the one for the lab for that day. um contact us so what i mean by us i mean the ta and i so instructor in ta details here we go so i am the instructor and the ta will be announced uh hopefully tomorrow we'll see how that goes okay um the way to reach us okay is not to send us email we have a help desk that we use for this uh, course. It's called the Trainer Help Desk. Now, I've been using a help desk in courses now. I forget how long. It, it's close to 10 years. And uh, I, I added up all the courses that I used one of these um, help desk software applications for and I think I taught something like 62 or 64 courses using um, some kind of help desk application and uh, my TAs and I have gotten pretty good at it and um, this one that we're using um, is just being rolled out uh, for the fall. I call it the Trainer Help Desk. And uh, if you want to know more about it uh, generally, uh, then um, uh, there's links about that under using the Help Desk for this uh, course. Okay? So, uh, one of the good things about using uh, the help desk rather than email is that the T and I, a TA and I can call each other in on things and we both can help you uh, with the same issue. Uh, usually one of us uh, first and, and then the other. Okay. Um, we don't hold conventional office hours, okay? Now, uh, at the end of each of the classes, we're going to have some lab time. So you can, you can get help then, okay? On Friday afternoon, there's a dedicated one-hour lab. Uh, you can get help then too. If you need a confidential one-on-one -on -one meeting, well, you can go to the help desk and you open up a ticket and ask for one and we'll schedule it and we'll do it. Okay. So using the help desk for this course, um, the new help desk 
uh, is called Trainer Help Desk. So there's a link here uh, to the About page in the User Guide. And if you want to get an idea about what it is and how it works, you can go there. Uh, or uh, one of the great things about this Help Desk is that you can use it without really having to register for some kind of a web application. You can have all your interaction with it over email. And so the question is, is where to send your email? Okay, so I have a link here. Uh, I asked 446A section, that's the section that you're in, compose email. So if you click on that, this will tell you what to put into your email in order to get help. Okay. And uh, uh, in terms of what do you send it to? Well, there's an email account for helping uh, 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 people from this uh, course. It goes to this thing we call a ticket queue for this uh, course. And the email account is is446a section at trainerhelpdesk.logent.net. Okay, and there's a lot of coaching here about what to put in your email to help us help you. Okay, and then uh, there's also some information here about, okay, now you've uh, composed your email. Uh, how do you send it and confirm that we got it? And then once we have your email and we've opened a ticket, well, then how do you correspond back and forth with the help desk team, which, of course, is going to be the T, A, and I. So there's a lot of information here in the user guide. It should be pretty straightforward. And um, I am hoping it's going to be as easy to use as I planned it to be. All right, so that's the help desk for this uh, course. Okay, so submitting assignments, okay. Uh, we're gonna be going through the course and we're gonna be learning a lot of skills, um, how to do planning uh, documents for, um, how to do planning uh, documents for uh, projects in which you're taking the waterfall approach or the agile approach. And um, so there's a whole bunch of practice assignments. And then there's a, a team uh, project. And then the team has three things that they hand in. Oh, I'm sorry, two things that they hand in. And then there's a peer evaluation at the end. Uh, I haven't published these yet because I need to revise the dates, but when I revise the dates, I'll publish all of these, okay? They're not due for several more weeks, all right? And then when we're doing these practice assignments, what we do in the next uh, class is we discuss the solutions. And what we look for are uh, kind of differences between what you did and what I did in my solution and variations between different people. And what we're looking for is well, what's a favorable practice, what's unfavorable, and what's just a difference in style, okay? And what we're trying to do is to get very um confident and familiar with these kinds of uh documents okay so i'm going to be uh publishing these right before the class in which we we discuss them okay so that's uh canvas okay so let's um we have a link to the syllabus. I'm just going to open the syllabus and walk us through the syllabus, OK? It will make that type a little smaller. Yeah. OK, that's good. So this is uh, systems analysis and uh, design. Um, and um, uh, 
I'm teaching it in the fall of 2023. Uh, the TA will be announced soon. Uh, we're going to meet on Tuesday morning from 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. in room 53 at the high school. Um, we're going to have uh, optional lab sessions twice a week, uh, one at the end of class. Uh, uh, because I will not be lecturing in most uh, classes, we won't use up the full uh, two hours. Uh, the time that we meet is going to be mostly a discussion and working in a breakout uh, groups. So there will always be some time at the end where I can answer some lab kind of related uh uh, questions. And then on Friday afternoon from uh, 2 to 3, we'll have a, a one hour uh, dedicated lab. So anybody who's got a question about any assignment or something that they'd like to talk about or um, is trying to form a project team, one of the things that we do is, is a team project, uh, can come to lab and we'll talk about it. Okay. And the labs are going to be online on Zoom. I don't do conventional office hours, but that doesn't mean that we can't meet one on one. But that is going to mean that if you need a one on one session that you're going to have to open a ticket on the help desk and uh, request one. OK, and when you request one, well, include some days and times that would work for you so we don't have to go back and forth too many times in order to set something up. And these kind of sessions will probably happen on Zoom. Okay. Um, oh, I see office hours are, are here uh, twice. Well, that's, that's a correction. Okay. Uh, contacting the instructor or TA, this is just uh, a copy of the same uh, content that's in the uh, syllabus. OK, so the links here will take you to uh, the informa information to get you started with uh, the help desk for the course. Now, the course itself, uh, this is an introductory course in systems analysis for computer based information systems. OK, so. Um, uh, then uh, I'll read the second one. Systems analysts are primarily responsible for eliciting user requirements, proposing a system solution that meets the requirements, creating a model of the requirements and a proposed solution that can be understood by both system users and system uh, uh, developers. Systems analysts also get involved in project identification, planning, management, supervision, and detailed system uh, uh, design and supervision of system construction. This course will cover two competing approaches to systems analysis and development. The traditional approach, sometimes called the waterfall approach or the predictive approach, and the agile system uh, development approach. OK. Um, I think they're both important to know. Um, certainly, the Agile approach is uh, very uh, popular. Um, um, but we're going to learn about both. And we're going to uh, put you in the position where you could work on a pro uh, you could work on a project as a systems analyst that took you know the traditional predictive water so waterfall sort of approach or you work on the, a project that took the agile approach um, and you could you could uh, uh, contribute to either of those or you could work on a project that did some kind of a hybrid all right and the course uh, topics are a um, A list of topics from our uh, textbooks that address the skills and knowledge that you need to do the job. 
So let's look at learning outcomes. After completing the course, you should be able to explain the role of systems analysts in understanding the needs and managing the expectations of project stakeholders. Explain the primary differences between the waterfall and the agile approaches to system development. Explain how to identify and initiate a viable project using either the waterfall or the agile approach. Explain how to plan, elicit, and gather system requirements effectively. Use systems analysis tools and techniques to model system requirements for both the waterfall and agile approaches. Explain the different ways in which the design of the system emerges in both the waterfall and agile approaches. Explain how programming, testing, installation, and maintenance activity fit into both the waterfall and agile approaches. Okay, so that's what we're looking to do. And we've got a series of textbooks. So our main uh, textbook is by Spurrier and Topi, uh, Systems Analysis and Design in the Age of Opportunities. Um, that's available in uh, paperback and as an ebook. Um, that's something that you're going to need to buy. Um, uh, the second uh, b uh, book here uh, by Leighton, Oster, Miller, and uh, Kynaston, Agile Project Management for Dummies, third e edition. I apologize for the dummies, but this is probably the this is probably one of the most straightforward explanations of the Agile approach uh, that's available uh, today. It's very accessible for beginners. And um, it I think it does a good job of representing the Agile point of view um, in an accessible way. OK, and that's a um that's a uh, paperback and available as an ebook and uh, you sh you should buy that now the last book the apple book um is available as a um is available as a uh a free book to access on uh, the O'Reilly Media uh, site. Okay, so um, this is a book that we're going to be using when we're working on conceptual data modeling. I recommend you use the O'Reilly copy of that. Okay. Um, technology requirements. Um, you're going to need a computer that, um, if you have a, a, either a Windows or Mac OS computer that uh, the operating system is up to date, you're probably going to do just uh, fine. Um, uh, a lot of the work that we're going to do for our course is creating these kind of planning and systems analysis uh, documents. And they can be either done on Windows or Mac OS. Um, you can do these things on Linux too, but you're really not going to get the, the support from me and from the TA uh, if you run into problems with Linux. So uh, I, I tend to try to talk you out of that. OK, um, if you're if you're a hotshot and you can support yourself, well, uh, great. Um, each uh, each of you is going to gr uh, join a group of people and do a project in essentially the last half of the course. And um, you're going to do it either uh, taking a waterfall approach or an agile approach, okay? If you're going to take a waterfall approach, well, you're going to produce uh, design uh, documents, okay? 
if you're going to take an agile approach, well, you're going to produce working software. Okay, so your team um, is going to have to have the machines to support that. Okay, now, um, uh, if in fact you're going to take an agile approach and you're going to produce working software, there are certainly tools that I use in some of my other courses, like my IS430 and my IS439, where we're using Anaconda and uh, Python and PyCharm and Django. Um, we have access to all of those things, and I can certainly make them available to you and your team. And um, to the extent that you need to get access to some other tools, well, I can try to help you do that too. The course schedule is just a link to the weekly schedule. Um, if we click through on this, we'll see the weekly schedule for our uh, uh, course is right here. Okay. Uh, where was I? I was right here. Okay. Okay. Um, course elements, readings. There's quite a bit of reading in the course. And one of the things that we're going to be trying to do is we're going to be trying to uh, kind of understand the differences by uh, doing systems analysis in the more traditional way compared to the Agile way. So we're going to be reading, in some cases, two versions of the the approach. So there's a fair amount of reading and I'm going to expect you to do it before we come to class. Um, lecture videos. Okay, I'm not going to do a lot of lecturing in class, but especially um, uh, uh, in most cases, I've created a lecture video for you to play. Um, before you come to class. Okay. Tutorial videos. Okay, so um, there are eh, really two kinds of tutorial videos. Uh, kind number one is um, in some cases where I'm having you install some software. It's not such a big deal with this uh, course, but there may be one or two. Uh, I have a tutorial video that you can follow when you're installing the software, okay? The other thing is when I have uh, kind of a skills practice activity that I want you to do, I'll typically have a tutorial video where I, I create that same kind of uh, document or deliverable for a similar this situation, but not exactly one, the one that you're going to do. And so you can play that to, so you can see it having been done uh, before you go try to do yours. Okay. We have these skills practice assignments where we're, um, where you're uh, practicing creating these um, uh, plans and, and, uh, design uh, documents uh, as a systems analyst, okay? And again, I typically have a tutorial in which I show you how to do it, and then um, I'm kind of showing you how to do it on a similar problem, and then you do it on your own, okay? The final project, okay, so the final project is a team project, okay, and um, I, I just want to address an issue here. I'm teaching two courses in the current semester that are kind of related. Uh, I'm teaching this, um, Systems Analysis and Design, and I'm teaching uh, 594 PJ, which is my project management uh, course. And I know there's at least one or two people registered for both. And I want to point out uh, one is that there's some overlap between the courses. So 
that might be appealing or unappealing. Okay, uh, but the other is that they both have a final project that you do with a, a group. And if you're registered for both, you've got to do two different projects with two different teams. There's no uh, double counting. Okay, um, so um, if you're trying to decide how to do that or if you want to do that, uh, please come uh, talk with me. So during the first half of the semester, we're going to be learning about systems uh, analysis and practicing the skills. And then during the second half of the project, approximately, you're going to be working on a small uh, project. Okay, and you're either going to be taking a waterfall approach in which you're going to be designing a system solution. You're not going to be implemented because that's not what waterfall projects do when they're doing systems analysis. When the systems analysis is done in a predictive sort of a waterfall approach, you have design documents. Okay, and then the expectation is that uh, there'll be a technical team that will come along and they will build it, okay? Would you as a systems analyst be involved with them? Uh, yes, you would, but we're not going to practice that now, okay? If, on the other hand, you take an agile uh, approach, you're not going to create a lot of design uh, documents. You're going to create working software, okay? So... If you're on a team that's taking the Agile approach, then you're going to uh, deliver working software, okay? And we're looking for a team of two to four uh, people. We're looking you to, for your team to find a real-world uh, client with a small to modest uh, size uh, problem or opportunity that can be solved using an information system solution. Um, and then we're looking for you to choose an approach, uh, waterfall, agile, or perhaps some hybrid of the two that we can work out the details of. Okay. Now, um, the first half of the course, we're going to be finding teams and finding clients and, uh, settling on an approach. And, uh, I set up a lot of opportunities for you guys to break up into groups and to talk with each other and find other people who would be compatible for a project. Okay, so that's going to be a lot of our in-class activity in the early days. But, you know, not everybody's going to find the same kind of project. Not everybody knows uh, prospective clients. It's, it's going to take a lot of collaboration and discovery to find a bunch of teams that are going to work out and projects that are going to work out. But I've been doing this for a lot of years, and you know what? It always works out. Okay? So, um, um, and we'll begin to talk about that uh, in week one, okay? So, uh, the final project is a group activity, okay? The grades are group uh, grades provided that everybody uh, participates and there are no freeloaders. Um, and um, it should be a lot of fun. Oh, uh, let's see. Attendance. We expect you to attend a uh, class. Okay. Um, there is no recording of the class uh, session. That's what we do when I teach the online version of this. So you really, you really should be coming. Uh, participation. Um, I'm, uh, I'm going to grade uh, participation. So um how do you get um how do you earn uh, participation points well by uh it doesn't say explicitly in here but the first one is when you introduce your first uh, self on the first day of class speaking during a class uh chatting contributions during class would be for an online class so there'll be no chance for that presenting your work during class, 
presenting as a spokesperson of your breakout group uh, during class. Uh, all those uh, things. Um, and I'll, I'll talk in a little bit about how how I uh, how I take these uh, participation points and turn them into a grade. Okay. Uh, grading policies. I've got a bunch of stuff here about the grading policies. Um, maybe a little more detail than we need, but there are always questions that come up for students. So I'm trying to do my best to make sure that you understand things up front. Okay. Systems analysis is a very detail oriented activity. So we're going to expect you to get the details right. Okay or when we grade things, there's going to be a deduction. So pay a lot of attention to details, okay? Assignment resubmissions are not possible after uh, the deadline, okay? So if you hand an assignment early, and then you know, maybe you're talking to somebody you're thinking about, you go, oh, I should have done something else. Well, go ahead and resubmit if we haven't reached the deadline yet. But once we reach the deadline, we're just going to grade it. Okay. Um, if you believe that you have uh, a reasonable reason for an extension, well, request one before the deadline by opening a ticket on the help desk. Okay. Um, we're going to be a deduction it, uh, it deducting for late submissions um you're going to do best by uh handing in your assignments on time and making a good faith effort on all parts okay because there's going to be a substantial uh, deduction for late submissions because we published the solutions um, there's a policy that says that if you submit assignments too late, they're not going to be graded and you're going to get a zero. Um, we, we really want to make it unappealing to wait until the end of the semester and submit all your work. Um, if you're having a problem with this provision and um you're too late on some things and you need to get some kind of exception to this well certainly open up a ticket and we'll discuss it great adjustments will be limited to automatic rounding so um uh we get to the i get to the point with people where they get to the end of the semester and they realize that they have gotten just one more point or two more points on some assignment that they would get their overall grade for the course would be like an a instead of an a minus or an a minus instead of uh, a b plus or uh, something like that uh well it's too late then we're just going to round okay that's all we're going to do Regrading requests that are made using the help decks will be given fair uh, consideration. And that's to say, uh, well, there are two situations here. One, let's say you handed in something in late and uh, we didn't remember to go back and grade it. Well, just open a ticket here and remind us that we have to go grade it, okay? The other thing is, let's say, um, you know, for each of your assignments, you're going to get a number grade and you're going to get a uh, feedback form, which is a PDF, which is essentially how we grade it and what all our comments are. Now, if you look at that and you really truly do feel that we missed something about your, your assignment, we didn't understand your work, well, just opening a ticket and asking us to regrade and we'll take another look. You know, we'll try to be fair. No extra credit opportunities, okay? Um, I've, I've set up the scoring on the skills practice assignment such that um, your, 
um, there's no way to tank your grade completely by having a bad experience on one of these skills practice assignments. So with that in mind, uh, we don't need to be dealing with extra uh, credit uh, assignments. So I don't uh, do them. Uh, ordinarily on uh, 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 all of the assignments, work that meets all of the expectations will score 95. So on all these assignments, what we do is we take the parts of them and we break them into regular exercises and a challenge exercise. So if you meet all the expectations on the regular exercises, you'll get your 95. If you do the challenge exercise, you can score somewhere between 96 and 100. So um, you don't have to do the challenge exercise. You know, if you're not interested in the last five points, you can do it. It's a lot of work for what you get, okay? Um, and the amount of help that we give for the challenge exercise is less than what we would give for the regular exercises. Now, uh, the next part is an important part of the way the grading works. Um, skills practice assignment submissions to meet certain criteria are subject to a minimum score uh, guarantee. So if you hand it in on time, and you hand it in the right way, you name the file the right way, you format it the right way, okay? Uh, uh, plus, you make a good faith effort on all parts, then the worst you can do if you really tank it is 85, okay? So there, there's, there's a score guarantee that if you hand it in on time, name it and submit the file the right way, do a good, make a good faith effort on all parts, you'll do no worse than 85. If you hand it in late, you can't get better than 84. Okay, so do them on time and make a good faith effort on all parts and follow the directions. And there's no real way to completely tank one of these. Okay. Um, so let's see, the participation grade, there's one more category here, I'm, I'm going to have to update this. When, when you in, introduce yourself during the first class, you get 10 uh, contribution uh, points. If you speak uh, during class, normal uh, thing, uh, two points, there are no chat contributions because it's not online. If you present your work on your assignment during class, you get five points. If you present as a spokesperson for your group, you get five points. Um, what I do is I just add up all these points at the end of the semester and I grade it on a curve. So, the people in the top half of the course, from the 50th percentile up, get 90 or better. And the people um, in the bottom half get uh, uh, less than that, okay? If you don't get at least uh, 10 uh, participation points, you get a participation grade of zero, okay? You can avoid that just by showing up at the first class and introducing yourself. That'll get you 10. Um, attendance at class may affect your grade because these participation points are all for things that happen in class. The basis for de determining a course grade. Okay, so there are two kinds of grades. One is... Uh, um, the individual grades, and the other is uh, the group uh, the project team uh, grade. So the participation is an individual grade. The skill practice assignments are individual grades. So 10% uh, for the participation, 45 
uh, percent for skills uh, uh, practice. The final project, which has three parts, a project plan, a project report, and a team uh, presentation, uh, that's a, a group uh, grade. And we do these peer evaluations at the end. So provided that you haven't tanked this and not participated in your group, well, then you get the same grade as the rest of the group. Um, if you're freeloading, well, then I reserve the right to reduce that. We take the number grades and we translate them to the letters using this uh, table, which I've used for 15 or 16 years now. I think it's pretty standard. And the thing that I want to emphasize again is that there's there are going to be no conversations where you say, if I had just gotten one more point on a certain assignment, that it would change a letter grade. We're just going to be rounding. That's all that's going to go on. Now, the last part here are these high school and university academic uh, policies. On one hand, they're very important things. On the other hand, um, they're kind of mundane because these should be on every syllabus that you have. Okay, so if you really understand these things already, fine. But if you don't, you got to pay attention here. Okay, I'm going to give you the broad uh, ideas here. If you need more information, please uh, talk to me. So incomplete grades are fairly hard to get at Illinois. So if you think that's going to apply to you, you're going to want to look up the details. Uh, high school academic integrity <laughs> statement. You really need to hand in work that is yours. Don't hand in the work of other people and don't let other people copy your work or you're going to get into big trouble. Statement of inclusion. We're very serious about everybody feeling safe and included. And uh, if you want more details about how, how we behave and what our expectations are, well, there's a link. Religious observances. You may observe a religious holiday um, uh, that uh, conflicts with the university calendar. If you do, well, um, there are procedures to follow. Accessibility, okay? Um, some people are uh, entitled to accommodations because of uh, disabilities and uh, are already working with this great organization called DRES, Disability Resources Educational Services. If you are working with DRES and you have a letter from DRES, well, please uh, send that to me. If you're not working with DRES and you think that maybe you should be, well, please uh, contact them. They're great folks. I school COVID-19 statement. Now the university is not currently in high mobilization over uh, COVID, but uh, we're not out of the woods. I'm going to be wearing a mask. I would ask anybody who would be willing to do that to please uh, do that too. Uh, please be as responsible as you can be. Um, in terms of uh, health as it relates to health uh, uh, generally and to COVID in particular. All right, so that is the syllabus. What does that leave? Well, that leaves us the, um, the schedule. Let's take a look at the schedule for this course. Okay. Okay, so I've populated the first three weeks of the schedule. Um, I'll have the rest of the schedule out in weeks uh, two or three. Um, it's always hard to get all the content up in the beginning of the semester. Um, 
I want to make sure that I get things up just exactly right. But it'll all be there soon. And when it's up there, I'll walk you through it. But right now we've got uh, weeks one, two, and three. Now, here's one thing that I want to point out. We're going to be doing a group project, okay? A team uh, project, okay? And we're going to be forming the teams in the first half of the semester, and we're going to be doing the project in the second, okay? So that'll be roughly, we'll be forming the teams in, you know, weeks one through seven, and we'll be doing the projects in weeks eight through 16 or uh, something like that something of that uh, variety okay um if you if i had the whole schedule up you'd see the details of that there'll be a lot of in-class activities in the beginning to help you find other people to form a team and uh, find a client and come up with an approach and all that kind of stuff all right all right, so let's look at week one. In week one, uh, of course, uh, we've got this lecture. Um, uh, the main thing that we're going to be doing, we're going to be two things when we come to class. One is that you're each going to be introducing yourselves, and we're going to find out about you and what your expectations are for the class. The other thing we're going to talk about is, uh, uh, what do systems analysts do? And one metaphor that I like to use for systems analysts is they're a lot like architects are for buildings. Okay. And I have a document. I've used this for a long time. It's from the Minnesota group of, uh, practicing architects and it's a document that they created for people who want to design a single family home using a one of the members of their professional association okay and i think that thinking of a systems analyst in this kind of metaphorical way as being like an architect who's going to work with, say, a family to design a home, I think that there's there's some good stuff to, to be gained. So I've 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 included this. Um, oh, sorry, I've included this article as something for you to read, and then we're going to discuss that. Okay. And then we have uh, a dedicated lab on Friday and no uh, hand in assignment for the week. Um, in week two, um, in week two, we're going to um, we're going to do the introductory readings for our our two points of view on how to how to do systems analysis okay the spurrier and topi book it's not that they don't talk about agile they do but i think that they try to do a really good job of seeing all the different approaches you could take on systems analysis whereas the Leighton and Ostermeyer book is less of a well-balanced kind of book. It, it proselytizes for the Agile point of view. So I'm, I'm going to have you read uh, the opening uh, content in both of those. And then we're going to talk about um, how we feel about this. Uh, Again, the Spurrier and, and uh, Topi people uh, try to be kind of even-handed about what kind of approach you're going to take. But uh, the uh, the Leighton, Ostermiller, and Kynaston people, they are, uh, they are agile zealots, OK? Uh, and they think it's their way or the highway. All right, so that's what week two is about. And then in week three, um, we're going to be talking about 
Um, um, anticipating make uh, 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 versus uh, buy uh, decisions with software. And that's pretty well uh, covered with this uh, identifying uh, development options, which is uh, chapter seven in the Spurrier and Topi book. Because there are times when uh, we're not going to do Agile anything. We're just going to go buy something, right? So we're going to talk about this. And of course, uh, interleave with all of this is in these first three weeks, we're going to be doing a lot of breaking out and getting introduced to each other and find to find, trying to find other people uh, who are in the course um, who have uh, compatible ideas about working on some project together. Okay, well, that's the introduction to the course. I'm really looking uh, forward to seeing you all on Tuesday morning. And I'm going to say goodbye until then. Bye-bye.